So today I thought we'd talk about <clears throat> if you have a Bamboo Labs A1 or A1 Mini and all of a sudden or gradually over time, could be either way, your first layer has just gone to total crap. For example, both these machines are working correctly now, but just yesterday and for about a week leading up to that, this of course, I crumpled this up because I threw it in the garbage. But imagine if it was laying flat. That was the first layer. And it uh, was totally unusable. And every one I tried was that way. It didn't matter if it was an old file, a new file I sliced. It didn't make any difference. It was like the Z offset was wrong. It was like the nozzle was being dug into the bed so hard that that it couldn't perform this correctly. So, I got online like we all would and checked into all the people that have had this problem or are having this problem and looked at all the different ways they were resolving it and things they tried and stuff like that. And uh, long story short, there's, there's a handful of things that you can do if your machine's quality has suddenly gone bad. Like I say, both these, my A1, and my Mini are now back to perfect quality again. The Mini had a slightly different problem. Its first layer wasn't this bad yet, but it would have gotten there. It was just doing uh, around the parts, kind of a ragged edge instead of being clean. And even though I normally print with a 0.3 elephant's foot compensation, it was like that wasn't even turned on. The parts still all had elephant's foot. I'm going, what's with that? I've printed this part thousands of times and it's worked before but it was getting worse and worse so it comes down to some loose screws that you can check but it mostly comes down to the eddy current sensor and if you're going what what's an eddy current sensor well there's a sensor that's used in the head in the hot end here that not only can sense uh, the flow pressure you know, when your machine starts up and it does the flow test and all that kind of stuff. But it's also the same sensor that uh, realizes when the nozzle has touched the bed. And uh, there's some things we're going to talk about that. A lot of the people that have this problem and turned in tickets to a Bamboo Lab, the only way they could get their problem resolved was Bamboo Lab would just send them a whole new extruder. And they would put the extruder on and all of a sudden the problem would go away. And you know, that didn't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, I'm going to get into that. I think the only way to really show you this properly is, since this machine is running about a two-hour project right now, is we'll just take this one apart in real time. Uh, this tripod's not quite tall enough for this tabletop, but I think we can make do, I hope. Let's see if we can get this aimed up where you can can see what we're going to be dealing with here. Okay, so obviously if all of a sudden your print quality goes to crap, one of the first things you're going to try is you're going to try replacing the hot end because you're going, oh well maybe I got some sort of jam or something's going on there. So you're going to replace the hot end and of course the quickest and easiest way to replace the hot end, if you've never done it yet, well, good luck buying a hot end, though. I just was up at the Bamboo website, and I don't know if it's because of the tariff thing that's going on or just people stocking up all of a sudden. Bamboo doesn't even have the hot ends. So I actually ordered a couple of spares off Amazon, which are third-party. They're not original. I'll do a video on that and let you know how those turn out. So, have we got enough light here? Let's, uh, let's turn on the light on the camera, just in case that helps a little bit. You got this clip, do I need to get closer? Just for those that haven't done it, we have to do this to talk about the rest of the stuff. If you have filament loaded, just push this filament cutter in over here till it cuts it. You don't have to heat up the machine. Make sure your machine is off. This machine's not even plugged in. I just carried it into the kitchen here. And if you just cut it, there's going to be a little bit of a tail on there. So you just kind of tip it and lift it out. You can put in the new hot end just as you lean clip everything back together and try it and see if that fixes your problem. But that's not really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about jams in the hot end. What we're talking about, and 
I may have to get even more straight on here. Let's get this camera in here. Because I realize that's dark. On my viewfinder, I can't really see what I wanted to show you. I'm hoping if I add maybe some more light. You've got three screws right here. You're going to want to make sure those screws are tight when you're all done with everything. But initially I'd say don't bother tightening those yet because we want to check four screws that you can only get to behind that. Now I can't hold this light and work this tool so hopefully these are the uh, Allen wrenches that actually come with the machine. Pull the bed out to hold the screws. And this machine, like I say, is working perfectly. It doesn't need me to do this, so hopefully I don't screw anything up. But <laughs> but I wanted to show you this because it's important. And uh, so far I haven't seen a video on YouTube that uh, actually showing what's going on. We're going to see things here. Maybe, depending on how I can get the camera angle and everything. Okay, so you get those three screws out. When we put them back, we're just going to make sure that they're completely tight. In my case, on this machine, they were tight. On the uh, A1 machine, they weren't. Then this whole piece, you can tip down, being careful, because there's wires connected to it, like so. Now, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can get the camera where you can see what I'm talking about. There, you see those four small Allen screws? Now I'm not going to be able to hold the camera and the light so that you can see what we're talking about here. But basically you're going to get on that with your smaller Allen wrench and tighten those four Allen screws. Will it show up at all? Here, I can point at them now. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Make sure they're completely tight. They seem to work loose on almost all the machines. They'd work loose on this uh, A1 Mini, although I've going on two years of having had this, just from the vibrations and everything. And if they're loose, the eddy current sensor is not going to work right, which means when it probes the bed, it's not going to work right. And when it does the flow compensation for the filament, it's not going to work right. Now let's see if we can aim this camera up. I really don't know. I may have to tip you sideways, so just bear in mind I'm tipping you sideways. Now, you see up in there, do you see that, see that black thing right there? That is the eddy current sensor. When, uh, when this hot end, <clears throat> when this hot end is installed, the eddy current sensor is like right above this piece here where that little label is. And it actually senses the movement. For example, when filament is being forced down into this, how far it moves away from the eddy current sensor, it registers. And when it's tapping the bed with the end of this, and that gets pushed up, the eddy current sensor senses when this moves up. Basically, an eddy current sensor is uh, an electromagnet. It's, it's a bunch of wire, and they put a signal into that wire, and the signal from that wire when it meets another piece of metal, in this case it's the aluminum heat sink, there's going to be an eddy current and the, the signal that bounces back or is caused, reflected from that piece of metal is going to cancel out. So that same signal they're putting there is also being examined by a circuit, which is on the board back here, for uh, distortions and changes. And there, any movement of that metal next to the eddy current sensor causes distortions and changes. Now let's put uh, let's put some of this back together. So if you've ever wondered where there, well, there must be a pressure transducer. How do they know when the uh, filament pressure is right and all that? And yeah, they're using the eddy current sensor. So let's put this back up in here. And what did I do with my big one? There it is. I don't know if it's really necessary for me to 
put this back together. For the purposes of this video, I mean, obviously I have to put it back together. <laughs> okay. Hey, if I can do this, most of it with one hand and some of it with two, but trying to keep the camera stuffed right in front of everything that I'm trying to work on, you can do it. So don't be afraid. Just be gentle, because you know there's wires on there. The wires, the wires that you saw coming off this piece, two of them are for the uh, ceramic heater element, and two of them are for the thermal couple that uh, senses the temperature. These are the ones you can, now you're going to make sure you get these completely tight as well. You don't want any slops there. See if there's slop on any of these screws so that this nozzle when you put in there can move when it shouldn't be moving or not move right when it should be moving. That's when your eddy current sensor is not going to do its job correct. Now see how this fin is going to go right up in there where I showed you where that black was which was the eddy current sensor. Magnet keeps sucking that handle over. Okay. Make sure you get that in there right. There actually, in case you haven't ever looked at one of these, there's a little, a little lip. See that little lip right there? It goes up on the bottom of that. Make sure you get that, and there's a ridge up here. Make sure it's really saddled in there correctly. Boy, that magnet likes to suck that over. So you go, okay, that's definitely in there. Flip that over, flip that over and then check it again. Make sure you're completely latched in nice and square and straight. And then of course, lastly, you're going to put your sock back on, which is always a tight fit, which is good because otherwise with all the vibrations and speed, that would fall out. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you in the front side. Make, Got to make sure those screws are nice and snug and there's no slop there. But, that didn't fix the problems with my, uh, I did all that stuff, put on a new nozzle, tightened all those screws which were loose, but my A1, the machine running behind me that you hear, was still turning out crap like this. It didn't fix it. This one on the other hand, I tightened all that up and all of a sudden the parts were really good. The elephant's foot compensation was right and everything else. So now what you need to do, and I did that on on both these machines just to be on the safe side. You need to come around to the back side here and camera angle again is low. Um, I didn't bring a tool in for this. What I need to do is get this bottom, that plastic plate on the back. Why don't we try a butter knife? Only because I haven't tried a butter knife. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be cool to experiment with something like that on camera? There we go. As you can see on the, uh, this piece that I just popped off, it has a kind of a notched area. You know that's going to be on the bottom. What we're really looking for here on this inside, I'm going to have to hand hold the, uh, the camera. I'm going to have to get you closer so we can see what we're talking about. So hang on. We're going in. Back here, if we move these, these wires out of the way, you don't have to undo any of these things. I'm just trying to get it out of the way so you can see what I'm trying to show you. Right here and here. See those two small allens? These two wires that have crimps on them, those come from the eddy current sensor. You need to make sure these are very tight. And in fact, even though mine were tight, I loosened mine up on purpose, grabbed these with some needle nose pliers, and just wiggled them back and forth, you know, trying to scrape the metal down, and then snugged them back up. And that made the difference. See, the, the, the coil impedance is very low on that eddy current sensor. It's just some wire. and. Uh, if there's any oxidation or poor connection, either in this crimp or on this connection going to the board, and this, this part that I'm telling you right now is actually covered on the Bamboo uh, WikiLeaks website thing. So 
tighten those down. Get, make sure there's a good connection and tighten those down. And that is what finally completely cured this machine from doing this kind of a crap first layer to doing flawless first layers. So those are my tips to you. If all of a sudden the quality of your machine has gone down as far as the first layer goes, um, you know, do the, the easiest things first, which is a nozzle swap if you have a spare one that doesn't fix it for you, then I'd say check all those screws in the front that I showed you, the three in the front and the four behind. They work loose. Make sure they're all snug. And then as long as you're doing this stuff, go ahead and pop the back cover off. Get in there and loosen and wiggle and then tighten them back up real well, the two eddy current sensors. I think you might be surprised. I think it might fix about all of them. It does explain why all of the people that Bamboo Labs just sent this whole new piece to, all of a sudden their problem went away. You know, you're going, well, why should that fix it? Well, I think it came down to the connections for the eddy current sensor being better on the new part than they were on the original older part. The problem could come back. I mean, these maybe could work loose or they might oxidize. Who knows? But the point is, clean them, tighten them up, and uh, I think it'll get everything working right for you again.